Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today we're going to be talking about specifically Mercury in Taurus and Mercury in the second house. So if you're new to my channel, hi, hello, I am uh, Brandon, I do astrology videos, and I will be kind of going through all of the planets and all the houses as well as all the signs. And for today, we are going to be talking about um, the Mercury in the second house. Um, and Mercury in Taurus. So if you have your Mercury in Taurus or you have Mercury in the second house, um, this is a video for you. I have timestamps down below specifically for those portions, so you're welcome to skip around there. And um, if you have Mercury in Taurus, there's a portion for you. And if you have Mercury in the second house, that's a portion for you as well. Um, and if you don't know what your chart is and you don't know what your Mercury placement is, there's also a link down below in my description um, that will let you know specifically where, what type of planets you have where, like what your chart is, um, and it will help you generate your astrology chart so you can find out if you have your Mercury in Taurus or if you have your Mercury in the second house. And so if you don't know that, do that first before you watch this video. Um, but at the end of it all, um, we are going to be kind of talking a lot about what Mercury means in Taurus as well as what Mercury means in the second house. And I am going to be going a little bit into, um, before all of that, I'll go into specifically Mercury and what Mercury kind of represents, what Mercury means, um, and how Mercury works within a chart. Um, and yeah, so that's really what I'm here for today. I'm really excited to be able to share my knowledge with all of you and speak specifically about Mercury in Taurus and Mercury in the second house. So without further ado, I will see you um, in the next portion. We're going to be talking about specifically what Mercury means um, within a chart. Okay, so when it comes to Mercury and how Mercury plays a part in your own natal chart, um, there's a lot of keywords related to Mercury that we're going to be going through, and you're going to kind of see me talking about them um, throughout the course of this video, whether it's talking about Mercury in Taurus or talking about Mercury in the second house. And Mercury has a lot to do with how we communicate, how we understand the world, how we um, make sense of what we're going through is Mercury. Mercury is a sign related to communication. It's related to a lot of things that are like um, uh, neurological, if you will, or things that are nerve endings are related to Mercury. Um, and anything that is very like um, mental, uh, mental, communicative, the ability to speak, um, how you communicate, how you like to communicate, how you like to intake information, how you like to output information. Um, that's all kind of shown by Mercury. It's also your relationship with your opinion and the opinions of others. So um, if you have Mercury in certain areas of the chart, certain signs, there's going to be a different depth or a different intensity um, or a different kind of smoothness depending upon um, the various ways that Mercury can be placed in a chart, um, and it's going to change your communication style and how you interact with information in a very different way. And um, knowing that this is a Mercury video and you have Mercury in Taurus or Mercury in the second house, there's going to be specific ways that you are going to view um, the way that you speak um, and your and, and your your vocal ability as well as just like your communicative ability and your information-based kind of way of looking at things are gonna be very Mercury Taurus and Mercury second house because that's what you're here for. You're, you're here for those two placements. Um, and so versus like if it was a Mercury in you know, the 12th house or something to that effect in Pisces or Sagittarius, it'd be very different with how, um, how the communication and information will be processed than Mercury and Taurus, Mercury in the second house. And that speaks to a bunch of different parts of the Mercury um, placement as well, because Mercury will be placed um, and they have aspects as well, which I don't really go into within the series here, just for brevity's sake. But at the end of it all, Mercury is really about communication. It's about how we, how we interpret the world. Um, it rules siblings, it rules um, travel, like short distance travel, it rules cars, it rules anything within our neighborhood, um, it rules any sort of ability we have to kind of recount our past or speak on what we're going through or speak about various different, um, you know, things within our life as we're able to communicate. Mercury is so important and having a, a well-placed Mercury is one of the most, um, what I've seen, one of the most um powerful indicators to someone's ability to kind of like um, adapt and be able to kind of go through life in a way that is understandable to them and is, is where they're kind of able to roll with the punches, if you will, with a well-placed Mercury. And um, Mercury naturally rules um, Gemini and uh, Virgo. And so 
whenever Mercury is in one of those signs, it's going to do quite well, um, as well as if Mercury is in a similar element to those, so in either air or earth, which is um, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, or Taurus, which is this one today, um, Virgo and Capricorn. They all kind of have a very similar quality to how Mercury kind of functions. Um, I do have, down in the description box below, I do have my beginner's course where I go specifically into a little bit more of how all of the chart kind of lays out. So it is a course that I have down below um, that will teach you more about specifically how to read your own birth chart. So if you're interested in that, there's a link down below for that. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, we're gonna actually jump right in and we're gonna go into the Mercury Taurus. Okay, portion. so we have Mercury and Taurus here and Mercury and Taurus is going to have a very different way of communicating that is a lot more steady, a lot more slow paced. And I find people that have Mercury and Taurus, they tend to have this sort of like slower, more digestible way of communicating. So when, unless Mercury is aspected in various, you know, intense ways, but for the most part, when Mercury is in a Earth, the Earth sign of Taurus, the very slow moving Earth sign of Taurus, the communication style for those with Mercury and Taurus, um, and this part alone are, are going to be, you know, very um, methodical, very like think of a of a bull going up a, you know, up a hill and being very patient with how they're how they're kind of processing information. They're going to kind of go at their own speed. And um, with Mercury in a fixed earth sign that is Taurus, there's a there's a potentiality to have a lot of very fixed opinions, a very very like I need to say this this is what I have to say it's very much like kind of like potential wall behavior there could be this kind of like I'm putting a wall up I need to do this thing I need to say this thing I need to this is how I say it this is what it is it's factual so it can have this very like solid way of of looking at you know the world and looking at a lot of different things it can be very like this is what it is these are the facts this is the foundation and Taurus rules that ability to create that foundation to have a solid, um, you know, sense of itself, a mm -hmm. solid, like, this is what I've built. So a lot of the time with Mercury Taurus, what I see is they will go and they will build these facts over time. They will build their argument. They will build the information. They'll gather the information and whatever speed, however process they have to do it. And then inevitably when they need to speak, when they need to say something, when they need to um, voice their opinion or stand on something, they will literally just be like, this is what it is. These are the words, this is what I have to say, that's it. It's very factual um, because when it comes to an Earth Mercury, um, especially Taurus, it's very, I don't wanna say black or white because that's not the case. It's very much like this is what it is. It's very stable because Taurus is one of the most, in my opinion, stable kind of, or stability focused um, placements for everything because it really wants to um, really create and and consistently have like a concrete kind of argument. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of like consistent sort of push when it comes to Mercury in this sign where they're going to very much have like a have a more of a defensive approach when it comes to communication. They can have an offensive approach, but it's very much like this is what it is, right? And you see that a lot with a lot of the fixed Mercuries is there's this very much like, this is what I need. This is what you need to do. This is how we need to do it, yada, yada, yada. Um, and they, they're very just like, this is what it is. And in Taurus in particular, it's, it's a very, um, what is mine? What is my value? What do I have to stand on? I'm standing on this opinion this is a hill that I'm going to die on kind of kind of stuff. You see that with a lot with a lot of the fixed ones, but I think Taurus is the most prone to doing that um, in a way that is like standing its ground on its opinion, on its, on its um, way of communicating something. And so you'll see that, especially if there's millennials that have um, Mercury in Taurus, and I speak on this kind of with every Taurus video I've done thus far, um, where if they are a millennial with that, they're going to have that Pluto opposite that Mercury. So because of that, um, there's going to be a lot more intensity to their conversations that are going to be flavored with the Pluto aspect of it. Um, I'm not going to talk about Pluto specifically in this series here, um, but it is something worth noting with the aspects and how they play out. So when it comes to 
that Mercury Taurus like stability and strength for the millennials in specific with that Pluto there, there can be a tendency to have to defend um, their opinion very, very powerfully um, because it was kind of abused and taken advantage by other people in that regard. And so you see a lot with, um, with that, with Mercury Taurus and that fixed nature, but it's almost being fixed because it's having to combat some, excuse me, combat something. And so with Mercury in Taurus as well, when it comes to the more Venusian side of things, we're going to see people that have really artistic ways of communicating. These are artists. These are people that are capable of creating amazing poetry. Um, I've seen someone who has, you know, a Mercury-Venus kind of connection, Mercury-Taurus, and they are so beautiful with, them, with how they speak, and it's one of those gifts of artistry with Mercury naturally in a Venusian sign, specifically in Taurus. Um, they can be great singers. They can be great um, communicators about sensory things. They're almost able and capable of communicating very, very beautifully about almost any topic. Um, and that's because they've worked on kind of tending to that garden, if you will, that comes with Taurus of their own mind. They, they've really, and that's what I mean when I was talking about like building that foundation and that kind of you know, that protection. It's like they've really built such a beautiful argument and a beautiful way of speaking because Mercury in a Venusian sign is going to want to communicate in a way that is beautiful, in a way that's receptive, in a way that is softer. So you see a lot of, um, like I said, poets, musicians, um, people that just love to speak about art or um, speak about finer things. You'll see that a lot with Mercury Taurus is their mind will be more prone to um, focusing in on the beauty of things or the value that that thing provides to them or provides to the earth. So you see a lot of Mercury Taurus, and I see I saw this with, with the Sun and Taurus portion as well, but um, you, you see this a lot with people that are very big environmentalists, but I think Mercury um, Taurus, you see this a lot more, especially if there's like Saturn or Pluto or Uranus influences that are really wanting to lend to um, the bigger picture of this, of the use of this person's mind if they have Mercury and Taurus. And so you'll see that there's a, there's almost this like um, groundedness or building of new foundation with their communication style. But it's in a way that isn't necessarily super adversarial. It's almost like knowing what is valuable to a conversation, what is, you know, the best information to bring to the to the table um, and also just talking about things in a sensory way there when you find like mercury and taurus mercury and cancer um th especially those two you're gonna see people that are gonna communicate in a very like soft way in a very like feeling through their body kind of way so these are great body workers um this is more so with like you know mars and mars and taurus and things like that but um, Mercury and Taurus can be great vocalists and healing through their voice and they can have this kind of like therapeutic quality to the way they communicate um, and artistic quality with how they communicate. So it's a very powerful and beautiful um, gift that they have having this Mercury and Taurus. And so um, I really urge you, if you do have your Mercury and Taurus, to see the value of your words and, and understand that and, and work with um, the value that you've provided with an opinion and, and know that there's something there, there's some value you have that you may not um, be able to really put into words quite yet, but know that you're building that argument, you're building that sort of, um, that value from your own opinion. Your opinion is very valuable and it can, it can make it hard when other people's opinions come at that Mercury Taurus, like I said, because there's this kind of like, no, I don't want to talk about that. It doesn't value, it's not me, it's not, it's not my value. So I think when it comes to Mercury Taurus, um, there's a lot of desire to have a solid argument for yourself. But then if someone is capable of poking holes, holes within that argument or within that opinion, sometimes Taurus placements, not just Mercury, um, they'll, they'll almost like, like I said, they'll be that wall. They'll just wall up and they'll, they'll kind of bulldoze in a way. Um, and so it's really important for Mercury Taurus to have that very soft approach. Um, and that's also kind of where you'll see where Venus is located in the chart and how that is playing out. 
um, because that Venus placement will definitely assist in letting you know kind of how um, the communication style is kind of coming out in addition to the aspects um, related to Mercury. And so it's really important to have a, a very solid um, argument when you're both speaking to a Taurus Mercury as well as being a Taurus Mercury. You're going to have a solid argument, but it's um, more important to lean on that Venusian quality, that soft quality. So even um, just finding ways to um, really see your value and be more kind of approached and approachable and, and, and kind of have an argument or have a communication that isn't so um, my way or the highway. Because with fixed, fixed signs, you're going to see that a lot where there's this like, this is mine and that's it, right? And so you can see a very like, self-focused, self-sustaining Mercury, where your mind's only gonna focus on what you can sustain and what is your opinion and that's it. And so there can be a little bit of difficulty there, but when you are looking for peace and you're trying to find value and make art and make music and find ways to communicate, that Mercury Taurus is great. It is really great to be able to communicate in a very grounded way. They also really like um, communicating maybe in a physical, tangible sense. So maybe sending like letters, um, handwriting notes, um, you know, being able to communicate in a more, and also in a gift giving sense too, there might be some nonverbal communication through gift giving when it comes to Mercury and Taurus. Um, so yeah, there's a lot there. Um, I really think that Mercury Taurus is, you guys have a very um, profound gift when it comes to um, communicating and knowing how to communicate in a very soft, artistic, beautiful way. So learning how to work with that beauty and learning how to consistently build that beauty and tend to the garden that is your voice and your opinion and your mind. Um, consistently in a way that is building that beauty from within your own mind and your opinion and not letting the toxicity around you necessarily bring you down. I think it's a lot about being able to speak in a way that is so beautiful that almost softens everybody around you. But to do that, you have to go through a lot of, um, a lot more difficulty sometimes um, with other people not really wanting to, or wanting to like, other people's opinions wanting to like, hurt that garden or harm that garden or harm that beauty that you've been able to build in your own mind. So it's a lot about remembering your value of your mind and being able to remind yourself of what your opinion is and know that your opinion, yes, is different from someone else's. That's the case for everybody. But it's a lot about knowing that Venusian quality of, of what opinion you can bring to somebody that will bring them into you and will connect you. Um, and there's a very, and that's where you lean in that Venus, that artistic, that soft therapeutic, um, caretaking quality that comes with Venus and or, or Venus Taurus energy. So just think about that um, and take your time, right? Take your time to kind of go through and um, talk about this with Venus and or with, with Mercury and Taurus as well. Um, there is a lot of communication around um, a mind around finances too. And you'll see that as I talk about this Taurus series, all about finances and talking about finances. So this can make someone who's very finance oriented with conversations. Um, and because it wants to sustain its own its own position, right? Um, and so, like I said, Mercury and Taurus, you guys have such a, a strong um, communication style, and it's really important to be able to um, communicate in a way that is receptive and as well as bringing people in and inviting to people. That's really my biggest thing with, with Mercury and Taurus. Is, and typically, you guys don't really struggle with that unless it's really difficultly aspected or you're being like pushed up against, but for the most part, the Mercury Tauruses that I've known have been beautiful, beautiful artistic people. So lean into that. That will be one of your biggest gifts. So I see the next part we talk about Mercury. So we have house. Mercury here in the second house, okay? So when Mercury's in the second house, this is going to change the flavor of it. So Mercury doesn't have to necessarily be in Taurus to be in the second house. Um, so it's, it's because it's going to be placed differently depending upon where the chart's at. And the house, the second house, is related to specifically um, your morals, your ethics, your values, your family, um, those rooted values that you kind of have created, um, as well as your resources, your money, your savings, your ability to make money, your, your value that you bring to the world. And when Mercury is here, this is your mind, right? This is, these are the people that make so much money through writing, through communication. These are the people that whenever I, whenever I see this, um, it always lends me towards telling them, what story are you bringing 
to fruition to make money? How are you utilizing your voice to make you money? How are you utilizing the art and the storytelling aspect that you have to make money? And when Mercury's in the second house, um, oh, if you use your voice to make money, you will do quite well. Um, granted, it is important to see like what's going on with Mercury, what else is going on with the second house, stuff like that. But for the most part, when Mercury's in the second house, this is literally the trader, like the like the one that trades goods, goes back and forth, because Mercury rules that. Mercury rules trade and commerce. And so when Mercury's in the second house, this is like a, a master salesman, um, where it's, it really wants to sell through its voice. It wants to learn how to make money through its own communication, through its own voice, through its own vocal quality. And so you see a lot with Mercury's second houses, um, especially if it's a well-placed Mercury, um, like especially in like Pisces and things like that. Um, even though Mercury's not well placed in Pisces, but in the second house, it can lend to a very, um, you know, artistic quality um, to the second house communication and making money through art. Um, I see this a lot with Mercury second house. Um, it's a lot of money making activities, a lot of conversations around money, around how to make money, around how to do it, how to teach someone to do it. Mercury in the second house can also be really good bookkeepers. Um, I'm kind of playing with a bunch of different placements of Mercury in the second house, but. At the end of it all, Mercury in the second house really wants to speak about things that are providing value to them um, and also making them money. That's their ideal, um, is being able to make money. And Mercury loves to make money, loves to trade, loves to barter. So these could be people, like if you see, this is interesting, I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but like if it was like a Sag Mercury in the second house, um, or even sometimes an Aquarius Mercury in the second house, you can see these as like those um, auctioneers, people that auction things off, right? That's a very interesting, um, or even Mercury and Gemini there too can be very like quick um, with their ability to make money and talking about money. And it, it can have this kind of like, um, you know, auctioneer energy, like kind of like that bidding, that person that talks really fast and has that whole like, you know, that's their job um, and they make money in, in communication. That's like a really niche one, but, um, that's kind of an, a way that Mercury in the second house can manifest. Um, it can also manifest, not necessarily through writing, but it could also manifest through technology, making money through technology or social media or any sort of communication. Um, you can see a lot with second house Mercury's of this kind of like focus of like, how is my mind like with like 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 if their mind is not right, and if their their mentality kind of wavers, or if their mental health wavers, um, and I should talk about this a lot with Mercury as mental health because um, if Mercury is not well placed, there might be some difficulty in being able to uh, maintain a healthy mental state. Um, but at the end of it all, when Mercury's in the second house, um, a lot of your your mental state is linked to your money making ability and what is in your own bank account. And so we saw this with the moon in the second house where the emotions are linked to the bank account. With the sun in the second house, we see the identity linked to the bank account. With Mercury, this is the mind. And so a lot of this can be your ability or inability to manage your finances with Mercury in the second house um, can really affect, um, you know, obviously like your mental health, your ability to understand. And it's almost like when your money is good, when your money is good, um, you know, you're mentally clear, right? Versus other times when your money's not so good, your mind is like constantly freaking out. And so um, that's why Mercury in the second house is really, really focused on learning about money and finances so that it can keep its mental kind of in this like businessy, grounded, um, adaptable mindset when it comes to spending money and its identity with money. And I think that's another thing too with Mercury in the second house, and I should bring this up with other second house placements later, but. Um, it's a lot of like, what is your relationship with money? How do you think about money? How do you think money is going to come to you? How do you make money, right? That's a lot of what we see with second house placements. And Mercury in the second house obviously will make money through its mind, but a lot of Mercury is about unraveling the mind in a way that is you know, therapeutic or healing. So I would think that there would be something here of, um, of being able to communicate or unravel your money-making, um, you know, limiting beliefs, essentially. Um, I think with the Mercury second housers, they can have such a mentally focused, like, predisposition to money that when 
they try and tease that out. And you see, you can see this with like a fixed Mercury. Like if it was like a Mercury and Leo in the second, this could be someone that's like really focused on money so much they don't see um, ways that it could they could improve their situation or that they could change it if they just change the way they viewed money a little bit, right? Mercury in the second, um, it can make a lot of money through trade. It can make a lot of money through communication and conversation, like I said, but it's important to note that Mercury wants to adapt, it wants to change, it wants to learn. And so if you're getting too stuck in the rut with your own beliefs about money, Mercury in the second house placements, um, it's important to know that like, maybe talk to someone else about money. Um, learn about other people's approach to money and their approach to value and their approach to morals and ethics. And that's another point. When it comes to morals and ethics, Mercury there can like, if especially if Mercury is in like a more trickstery place, it can speak really highly about money or have or like have a perceived high moral ethical standpoint um but can also like kind of spin that like when it needs to um so like i said if mercury is well placed and has a lot of like um mercurial and trickster manipulative manipulative ability because mercury does have that as well it's very it, it can be manipulative if it needs to but it does that because the mind is the mind is one of those things that we don't really explore or talk about as much as we should in astrology and mercury has a lot to do with that because it is this programming that we have and the mind um is one of those the mind and mercury is one are one of those things that we sometimes don't know that it's working against us or we sometimes aren't aware of these um these mental frameworks or limiting beliefs that we have and um mercury sometimes mercury also rules lying right um so like if mercury were to be in scorpio or in you know um sometimes even capricorn in the second house you can see someone who makes money especially with scorpio you can see someone makes money through lying through illegal trade um and that's the thing about mercury it can be kind of it kind of it will adapt to whatever it's in it's very adaptable and because of that Mercury in the second can adapt to make money in so many different ways. And I really urge you to think about how, um, you know, your Mercury in the second house um, has adapted you through your money making abilities. And I think it's, a, it's really important to consistently work on adapting and finding different ways to make money with Mercury in the second house and, and different ways to approach it so that you can really um, have a, a a grand understanding on your specific relationship to money because second house placements they really really focus on like morals and ethics and values and with mercury here it wants to explore that and the more money you have the more your ethics and values are on display and when there's mercury here mercury might um you know your mind is very important your information is very valuable and your um you know desire to find information is very valuable but what's more important is um, your ability to like adapt to make money, to adapt to find your value because it's a lot about exploration of value, I think is what I see with this Mercury in the second, is, is being inquisitive about what you could find valuable about yourself, what you could find valuable about a conversation or with a person um, and looking online or looking in different areas to try and learn more about who you are, what you are, what you wanna do, you know, how you wanna be, you know, how you want to take in information, what you want to learn about, what you want to talk about, what valuable thing is is being brought to, you know, the conversation. What are you bringing to the conversation? Um, and so it doesn't have to always be focused on money because at the end of it all, Taurus second house placement, a lot of it, and more so second house than anything related, like in regards to Taurus, is about morals and ethics and knowing, like, specifically, like, more so, like, what do I value? How do I value that? And how do I stand on that opinion, right? Your opinions are valuable. I said this to Mercury and Taurus, but Mercury in the second house, it's different because it's about you being able to explore the, the conversations that you're having with yourself or the information that's out there and kind of say, is this me? Is this worth me building on this? Is this worth me speaking about this? Is this worth me learning about this? And I think there's so much information out there that when you have Mercury in the second, it's a lot about sifting through valuable or, un or valuable, invaluable, not valuable information and finding that value 
as it relates to you. And I think with this, it's a lot about having a, a thirst for knowledge that is consistently going to bring you money and bring you value. And I think the more you learn as a Mercury set, Mercury second house person, the more you learn, the more you consistently study and consistently put yourself in information, like absorbing in, um, environments, the more you will inevitably find your value, inevitably find your morals and find what you want to stand on and what you don't want to stand on. And this does also, like I said to Mercury Taurus, is makes you really, um, really important to discern what is your value, what is someone else's value, how do you communicate about these things, um, and, and know how to bring the conversation to someone else, um, as well, uh, and seeing what their, what information they're bringing in the conversation, and how you guys can come together, how you guys can connect. Um, there's a lot of that with Mercury in the second, um, and, and knowing your, where you stand is very important, but and knowing what value you hold is very important, but also knowing how to bridge that gap is even more important. And I think the more information you have, one, the more money you're gonna make, like that's almost guaranteed with Mercury in the second, um, the more information knowledge you have, so long as you can retain it and you can understand where what is yours and what is someone else's value and what information is valuable to you, the more information you can find and value you can, you can sit in, the more you're going to feel valuable and make money in the same vein. And I think it's really important to dig into that and dig into what your limiting beliefs are around money and around your um, ability to make it and ability to speak on it, right? There's a lot of this is Mercury. I don't know why I didn't bring this up before, but this could be people that also have a lot of like, um, because they have those mental blocks with money, which all of us do, but Mercury second houses, I think are more capable of breaking them than the average because um, your mind's already kind of focused in on that area. And so, what I really think about with Mercury's second house is this like morning affirmation kind of person, someone who always consistently says the same thing to reprogram their mind. There's a lot of reprogramming their mind based off of different values um, and, and knowing how to stay valuable and how to uh, maintain that mental space of like, this is my, this is my worth, right? I would urge like Mercury second houses to like go to very various different environments um, and see how you respond energetically to those environments. So think about going to, you know, um, if you wanna go really extreme, you can just to get that dissonance um, and, and therefore kind of figure out where you land, but go to like really affluent areas, go to really, really affluent environments and really beautiful spaces, um, but, and then also potentially go on the other end of that, go to homeless shelters, go to, you know, people that are really struggling financially um, and see how your mind, and your energy works with that. Go to casinos, right? Go to Vegas. Vegas is so Taurus. Um, Vegas is one of those places that will magnify your relationship with money. And I think Mercury and the second house um, really need to be in environments that allow them to think differently about money and value and resources and things. I'm mean, understand more about what their value is that they bring to the table, what resources they have. Um, and what they're grateful for or what they strive towards, right? Um, in the physical, tangible world. Um, and what they want to talk about, what they want to learn, right? So I think there's so much to be said on that. And I could talk about Mercury Taurus a lot longer because Mercury and Mercury loves to talk. Um, and so, yeah, so I really love, love doing this. And I really hope that this allows the Mercury Taurus and Mercury second elsters to really learn more about what it is that they specifically have to say that has value and, and understanding that your search for value in your mind is so important um, and your ability to find it is even more um, prominent with Mercury in the second and Mercury in Taurus. So yeah, I really love doing this and I really hope that this was able to give some Mercury second house, Mercury Taurus people a, a sense of faith, a sense of understanding, a sense of validation um, with everything. And there's so much to learn out there. And especially when we talk about Mercury, there's so much out there that you can communicate about, that you can sift through information-wise. And just the fact that you're here today means a lot to me. So thank you for watching this video. Um, and obviously, as you know, like, subscribe, comment, all those things, because um, it really helps me out um, and helps me kind of 
see what you guys like and what you guys want to do. And I'm going to keep doing this whole series, so you're going to see a lot more of me. Um, and I'm really appreciative, like I said, of being able to do this. This means the world to me. Um, and if any of you are interested in doing any sort of reading with me, um, my website is down below, as well as all my socials. Um, so feel free to reach out to me there, and we can set something up. Um, and yeah, I just appreciate you for watching the, all the way through, wherever you watch from, it doesn't really matter. Um, just thank you for being here, and um, I really hope that this video helped somebody. So thank you so much, Mercury Taurus, Mercury Second Houses, and I will talk to you later.